Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Norris McDonald. I'm founder and president of the Center for Environment, Commerce, and Energy. John McCormick is founder and president of the Energy Policy Center. And what we're going to present today is how you can turn carbon dioxide into gasoline. Most people are worried about carbon dioxide as global warming gas and what to do with it. And the primary solution that people talk about is sequestration, trying to put it in some geologic repository somehow, put it underground somehow, and store it that way. But we're concerned about the piping. But since this is an environmental justice con conference, let me put it in context. What we tried to do here in this solution for turning carbon dioxide into gasoline is to solve a number of different problems. Not only an environmental justice problem, because the environmental justice problem is air pollution and asthma. I'm a chronic acute asthmatic myself. Um, the smog levels in the cities are going up, so to the extent you can reduce emissions going into the cities, you reduce the smog levels. As such, our, in our organization, we support nuclear power. That's one solution. You combine nuclear power with hybrid electric vehicles, plug-in fuel cell hybrid electric vehicles and electric vehicles, and you have another large solution. So you have no coal emissions coming out of coal-fired power plants and no emissions coming out of the automobiles, or very little coming out. Another problem is your coal plant. We have so much coal in America that we're going to use coal. And so it's a matter of then you hear about clean coal and people say there's no such thing as clean coal. So what we do in this solution is you can burn coal in a pure oxygen environment. It's called oxycombustion. And when John comes up, he's going to go into the technical aspects of all of this. But you can burn coal in a pure oxygen environment. OK, well, how do you get the oxygen? You split water. You split water using either hydro hydrolysis or high temperature steam. How do you split that? How do you do that? Well, with nuclear power, you can put that electric um, current in the water and split the hydrogen and oxygen, the oxygen that way. So that's how you get your stream of oxygen for the oxycombustion in the coal plant. Okay, you also have hydrogen. What do you do with the hydrogen? That's for the fuel cell, for the automobiles. That's what powers the electric cars as a fuel cell. So now what we've done is we've taken coal and now we have an oxygen source for oxycombustion in the firebox, which then you have very little carbon dioxide coming out, if any. And then you have also uses for oxygen and hydrogen in the process. And so in this process, you also have to then um, produce gasoline from the carbon dioxide, from whatever's the residuals coming out on the carbon dioxide from the oxygen, oxycombustion. You're still going to get some carbon dioxide coming out. And that's where you do the conversion into gasoline. But let me back up just one step first. How is the Defense Department involved in this? Well, the Defense Department, the problem with nuclear power, and we support nuclear power, is that it's become so expensive that it appears that the um, utilities are not going to be able to afford to build nuclear power plants. I mean, the power plants now cost about $10 billion each. That's usually more, worth more than the companies. I met with some of the um, nuclear utility executives. As a matter of fact, I was with one yesterday, and their company is worth $10 billion. So you have to shoot the whole farm on one project. And so it's our conclusion that it's not going to take off in a big way, even though it's a solution, just because of the financing um, of the projects. That's why we bring in the Defense Department. The Defense Department has money. We believe that energy use in the United States is a national security issue, and so is climate change. So if the Energy Department has money, then in a power plants cost $10 billion each. What John and I came up with, and we came, over, came up with this over years of, of discussing energy policy, what we came up with was to combine the um, nuclear utility sector with the Defense Department and set up what's called energy defense reservations. Ten of these energy defense reservations all over the country, probably the same way the federal offices are laid out, and they would provide your base load power. Base load is running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, whereas your peaking power just comes up during hot summer days. So you would have this base load power from nuclear power plants that also produce oxygen for oxycombustion for coal plants on this reservation that would also be producing hydrogen for production of hydrogen fuel cells 
And so you'd have all of this going in one big reservation. How much would that cost? And that's where we get kind of into pie in the sky. That's going to be pretty expensive. We're, we don't even know how much. And that's what our challenge is in trying to discuss this with the Defense Department, with DARPA, uh, the Defense Advanced Research Programs Agency. And, and our estimate could be 20, 25 billion, 30 billion. But the Defense Department has money for this sorts of thing, these sorts of things. We're spending a lot of money now on a lot of different programs. I think that a secure electricity grid based with the combination of utility <coughs> companies and the Defense Department building these energy defense reservations that not only produce electricity, they produce oxygen, they produce hydrogen, and they burn coal in an oxygen combustion environment where you can still get use of coal. And the byproduct, by the way, is this facility will use what's called the Fischer-Tropes method, and John is going to go into this. The Fischer-Tropes method to turn the carbon dioxide that's coming out of the oxy combustion into gasoline. Now it's the same process where you use, turn coal into uh, liquids, coal into fuel. The Germans developed the Fischer-Tropes, um, turning coal into diesel fuel. It's the same process. John will go into it, but basically you're taking that hydrogen again. You're taking the hydrogen and mixing it with the carbon dioxide. That'll get you carbon monoxide. That gets you from the water to gas shift. And so then you take the carbon monoxide and mix it with hydrogen again, and you then you get the fuel. And that's the water, I mean the gas to water shift. Is that correct, John? Okay. So that's the shift in all of this. So it would be a huge complex and a huge operation that involved the Defense Department and the nuclear utilities in a partnership. It wouldn't replace the market, because I'm a market guy. But we would have a good base load and a good base for our electricity production. And then utility companies could compete on top of that to build the plants we need for maybe additional electricity. So that's kind of the introduction of it. I hope you understand you can ask questions. And John has a PowerPoint here. And we'll just go through that as quickly as we can. If you have any questions, I guess, just ask them as we go along. John?